gotta hide beneath your glow. You're losing control. Uh, tell me a little about the studio and then the musicians that you uh, have on the album. Zach Primrose, if I'm pronouncing that right, his studio down in southern Vermont. Mm -hmm. um, Primrose Redu Productions. Mm -hmm. um, he does a great job, very mm -hmm. patient. Um, we we ended up recording there. I The musicians I had, uh, Ross Van Bucco, mm -hmm. my buddy Jacob McLaughlin, and myself, and I overdubbed the rest of the parts, and then Chaz came in for the saxophone. And uh, Ross and I've been playing. He's, you know, he plays with me in my band, Flashback. We do a lot of cover tunes and stuff. Um, we we've just been jamming out a lot at open mic at at the at uh, Anglers. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's he's really great. He mm -hmm. was very patient because a lot of these songs were parts that my cousin Mikey came up with and Ross just took these parts and just amped them up and mm -hmm. did his own thing but still kept what I you know would work with me what I'm going after mm -hmm. and like he definitely is the backbone for these songs for sure like mm -hmm. I'm really really pumped to have him on him yeah. and my buddy Jacob very he, he just nailed it like mm -hmm. the piano parts he just he added in that some of the classical element for some of the songs nice. you know the epic stuff mm -hmm. I was very influenced by um, when I wrote some a lot of these I was watching uh, religiously mm. <laughs> watching the making of Bruce Springsteen's Born to Run. Mm, okay. So I okay. totally was going for that, mm -hmm. and um, he nailed it with that. And same with Chaz. He brought that saxophone, mm -hmm. you know, that soul kind of sax element to it. And um, I kind of like that idea of having, like, kind of like that Springsteen kind of sound with a little bit more guitar. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of uh, balancing that with the saxophone was really cool. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then I did a bunch of overdubs for the rest of it, and, but it was a lot of fun, and cool. Zach was, was amazingly patient, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm very demanding about what I want with my music, <laughs> and he was very, very patient and worked with me, and honest, but not mean, but uh -huh. honest, and we got, we got things done. Great. Sounded great, so. Awesome. Cool. Well, before we get too far, let's talk about uh, some of the details of your EP release party. Uh, um, very excited. Yeah, so where is it, when is it, what should people expect? It's going to be down at the alley here in Rutland, Vermont. Center Street um, Alley. Center Street Alley, yep. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be going playing from 7 to 11. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be starting off um, with some... Um, I'm going to be doing one original that's not on the EP, one that's possibly going to be on the EP, <laughs> which has. And then the four songs are definitely on there. And then I'm going to do uh, three other, two or three other originals after that mm -hmm. that, I, that I'm going to work up with the guys... So I should have about nine songs of my own material I plan to do. Great. And then I'm going to let the guys get up and do their thing. Um, and uh, it should be a lot of fun. Cool. It should be a lot of fun. So cool. Very cool. they're going to, they got some of their own stuff they've been working on, on their own projects. So hope to give the spotlight to them. What was the date again? The date is uh, November 11th. Excellent. That's on a Saturday. Cool. Cool. Um, how you doing? Busy. Yeah. <laughs> busy. Super busy. Super busy. Cool. Making it happen, right? Yes. Very much so. Just mm. just busy trying to get this, this all figured out, the details, mm -hmm. working a full-time job, just a lot. Right. But it's a, it's a, it's a very much of an accomplishment. I was mm. I tell everybody, I'm like, once this is done for once, I feel like I'm, I'm okay with the year ending. <laughs> you know, I'm okay with time moving on because yeah. I, got, I got this done. This is something on my bucket list amongst many things I want to get mm -hmm. done and this was definitely an accomplishment so excellent I'm very excited you know for for once I'm excited for the year to go out in a good way yeah so yeah cool well when you were talking about your songs you mentioned a, a, a lot of influences uh, it's clear you're not just a musician but you're a, a student of music and you studied it and listened a lot I'm sure you know read and watched a lot um, you know who are some of your influences and how did you kind of get started playing music? Well, obviously the first influence everybody knows me for is the Elvis thing. Mm -hmm. And um, that started when I was two years old. I watched a videotape, the 68 Comeback Special. Um, and I, what happened was my 
aunt and my mom were going, we were visiting them down in Connecticut, and they went to, they were actually, it was like a musical day all around. They were going to a Sherelle's concert of all things. Mm -hmm. And so my dad and my uncle put on my aunt's videotape to kind of keep me busy, put on the videotape, see if they'd like Elvis. <laughs> From there on, mm -hmm. I just, that was it. Nice. Like, I, I, like, that was, that was it. My mom came back, wanted to take me to the park. Nope, I want to watch the Elvis tape again. <laughs> and those, my poor parents, like, I drove them nuts. Mm -hmm. And it was nothing that they, it was nothing that they pushed on me. Mm -hmm. Like, I just, my dad played the older Elvis and stuff. He liked mm -hmm. Elvis, but it was nothing that was really pushed on me. I just, my taste just went right to him. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, because where are you going to listen to Elvis, especially pre-internet, right. you know, other than Al albums or tapes well maybe if you're lucky you'll listen you'll hear them on the oldie station right so i got listened to the oldie station oldies 92 out of middlebury mm -hmm. and they played you know they played uh, you know of course i got to listen to all his peers i got to chuck berry buddy holly mm -hmm. i mean roy Orbison, um you know jay Lou lewis little richard like you know because i got into all these oldies i you know go from there of course i heard beatles early beatles and mm -hmm. stones and a lot of Motown. That's another mm. thing that people they know me for Elvis and Rockabilly, mm. which is obvious. But I love a lot of Motown mm -hmm. soul and nice. a lot of that, you know, kind of stuff. Uh, the Drifters, temp, the Drifters, a lot of duop groups, Temptations. Mm -hmm. I love and yeah. just a lot of that stuff. And then um, you know, it just snowballed right a lot. Mm -hmm. So cool, cool. And um, you have some formal training. You went to Castleton. Right? Yes, yes. Uh, I went to Castleton. Well, they keep changing the name, but right. when I started, it was Castleton State College. Now, then I went to Castleton University. Now it's Castleton at Vermont State University. <laughs> um, yeah. I just call it Castleton State Castleton, University. Yeah. I call them Castleton State University. Make it easy for everybody. Yeah. But um, I went there in my hometown, mm -hmm. and that was great. I uh, majored in music and communications, mm -hmm. and was a focus on classical guitar. Um, which helped open up my right hand mm -hmm. for my actually helped me play rockabilly more. Yeah. Because yeah. I can I could pick more, mm -hmm. um, and it really did help with my technique on that. And then while I was doing that, I outside of college, um, I joined a barbershop choir, mm -hmm. um, run by uh, Dan Graves. Yeah. And that was a lot of fun, and that kind of helped more of my my melodic ear. Mm -hmm. And of course, the funny part of it is, is I'd be in choir at college sing at a bass one part and then I turn around and go to there and they'd have me on lead so I'd be singing <laughs> both ends of my range like in a single day but it was a lot of fun cool a lot of fun cool. very 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 busy um I met you know I met Jillian there mm -hmm. you know nice. uh because we both are Elvis fans mm -hmm. um so yeah a lot of fun cool cool and you spent a little time in New York City as well and that's I kind moved, of a turning I, point yes I I saved up uh money and I moved to New York City to pursue music and uh lived in a moved down there lived in a sublet for a while sublet mm -hmm. <laughs> sublet ran out i thought i had a place and i got scanned mm -hmm. so then I, I i was working at the time in brooklyn so i was had a sublet in staten island would commute to brooklyn every day five days a week for work and then i got scammed so i would so i was my boss was nice enough to let me keep my stuff, majority of my stuff in the basement at the butcher shop, so mm -hmm. that I worked at. So <laughs> <laughs> I'd go with my guitar, and my suitcase, you know, to keep on me. I'd mm -hmm. go around from hotel to hotel for like half a month, oh, wow. um, while I was still working, you know. Yeah. And then, and then I, then I go and, uh, but then I finally, eventually, my mom helped me and she pointed me in the right direction. And I finally was able to get a place in Harlem, so that worked out mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. But anyway. Um, but yeah, it was great. New York City was great. Um, I joined, you know, within a month, I joined my first band down there. Mm -hmm. um, we did a lot of 50s, 60s stuff. Kind of like a lot of what I do with Flashback. Mm -hmm. um, we, we had, it was great times. With our first gig, we lucked out because they booked us because they thought we were another band with a similar name. <laughs> so we lucked out to get a gig there, and we lucked out. We weren't going to do a sound check, but we lucked out because the... Um, the person that was supposed to be before us canceled, so we were able to get a free sound check, nice. and that was a lot of fun. And I ended up getting involved with some other bands playing. One thing that really surprised me about the city, and you think this New York, you might think jazz, but there's like some really cool blues jams down there. Mm. Uh -huh. I um, I lucked out. I went. There was a. It was booked. It's like an open mic, mm -hmm. but it ended up being more of a jam. Um, it was uh, Cassidy's, like Fifty Seventh Street or Fifty Sixth Street. Mm -hmm. 
and I became friends with a lot of the people, and they, you know, older, most older people, mm -hmm. which I'm used to with the music I'm into, but it was great. It was a lot of fun. Um, they, they played a lot of the Roots Rock and 50s stuff, and from then I found out about uh, down at the Red Line, down at the Village, mm -hmm. they uh, do uh, open mic every Monday, mm -hmm. and I went there when I could make it, and it was just great. I got to, I, I, I mean, I like to play, but it was great just to watch I, I got more into blues the older I got, so mm -hmm. it was great to watch people, you know, watch and be like, okay, I could play that, but the question is, why why don't I play that, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And watching people how they, you know, it's not about how fast you can play or how many crazy techniques, right. it's, you know, about taste, mm -hmm. phrasing, and I got to watch some really great players, really great, great players, met some cool, cool people. Um, then I did this We Love Songwriters open mic with my friend CC Eve. I got to be friends with her, mm -hmm. and that was amazing. You yeah. know, they had all sorts of people, like all sorts of songwriters coming in. Mm -hmm. You know, they'd have backing tracks, they'd have mini bands, they'd have, you know, just all sorts of different music. And everybody was very supportive. Nice, nice. And um, it, was, it was a blast. I had a really good time down there. Um, it was a lot of fun. Cool, cool. So, so I'm, I'm curious, again, I'm, you know, we've known each other quite a long time. Um, what has it been like for you trying to, to play music in Rutland? I think Rutland's kind of got its good parts. It's got its challenges. Very it's, tough. <laughs> you're still here. Very uh, tough. Well, yeah. um, I probably should backtrack a little, mention why I'm here. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, or unfortunately, why I came back. Right. My mom passed in December of 2019. Mm -hmm. And I had to come back, take care of stuff. And then before I was plan to come back COVID hit oh, yeah. so I, I'm here so you know it snowballed I ended up starting a cover band and then I you know I was like I just decided I really want to get my originals mm -hmm. down you know and I really it's about time mm -hmm. I really got to get these down and I want to get them recorded it was it was actually something I was trying to do the week my mom passed I was mm -hmm. starting to work with some guys to try to down the city to try to get them together so I'm really, I was just, I needed to get them done. It was, mm -hmm. it was driving me crazy. And playing, playing covers, you know, you are put in a box. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I know a lot of people think of me for the Elvis thing. I get it. I have, that's my look. It's almost part of my DNA at this point. Okay. Sometimes I don't even realize it. It's just mm -hmm. me. Yeah. Um, but I really want to share with people like, you know, like my song Drive. It's, you know, I'm not singing like, like Brian Johnson, but it's got an AC, DC vibe, mm -hmm. you know. But if I try to cover ACDC, they're going to say we don't sound like, well, yeah, <laughs> of course, you know. Um, so I wanted to be able to, like, share my, all my influences mm -hmm. and, you know, kind of and do my own thing mm -hmm. and really show people what I'm fully about, aside from everything I just do in covers. Right. But it, it's been it's been a struggle, you know, trying to find the right people, going through multiple band members just for the cover band, mm -hmm. um, trying to put things together. And I know I'm demanding, mm -hmm. like the way I write and the mm -hmm. way I hear things. Um, but that's kind of that's the other thing is I I wanted to record them so I can show people what I'm going after, mm -hmm. you know, so mm -hmm. people I you know so people can know what I'm about right. aside from just you know the Elvis and the '50s '60s stuff, which that's definitely a part of me. Mm -hmm. Um, but like I said, I got other influences. Um, I got into classic rock in high school and stuff, and definitely lots into blues, southern rock. Um, so there's a lot of influences that go in there. But it's it's been a process, and it's been a lot of balancing this and you know taking care of a house I inherited and yeah. work and forty hour you know full time job and yeah. it's been a lot. But it's it's definitely it's coming down to the wire where it's going to be worth it. So nice, feeling very positive. Cool. Well, give us one more plug about the EP release party. Well, like I said, it's gonna be it's gonna be at the Center Street Alley. Um, I'm gonna be doing about nine nine of my originals, mm -hmm. uh, four of which are definitely on the EP, and I'm really looking forward to getting out there and playing. And the and it's really cool playing at the alley because, as you know, that mm -hmm. was the first that was one of the first places I actually played out mm -hmm. in public, um, doing open mic back in the day. Right. So it's gonna be full circle because now I'll be going up there, really doing my doing my own songs with the band, and so hopefully sounding really really good. Um, you know, as opposed to years ago when it was like getting up there, a nervous wreck, attitude guitar strings, attitude voice. <laughs> you know, so it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good yeah. full circle um, to get comfortable and feel uh, feel like 
feel like I can just get up there and do my thing, and I'm really, really pumped to do these songs live with, with more, you know, with a full band. I got my buddy Michael who plays in uh, Flashback. He's gonna be playing some organ on it with us as well. So it's just gonna be really, really cool. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm well, I can't wait. Yeah, you've worked hard and you, you've earned it. You got here. Congratulations. Thank you. And uh, have a lot of fun on the release party. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thank you.